Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. The three keys to your success is just moments away. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. My, oh, my, it is going to be a phenomenal show tonight because we have an absolute veteran business owner with us tonight, and she is one amazing woman. You can't, I can't wait to share with you all of her accomplishments, what she is doing today, and more importantly for you, how you can become more successful in your business because that's really what this show is all about. It's about mind, which is mindset, and how to develop a rock-solid mindset that you will not give up no matter what once you have that mindset developed. And then there's body. That is about taking care of your body, literally, through nutrition, through exercising. And it doesn't mean you have to become a bodybuilder or a fitness professional. It just means you need to take care of yourself. And then there's business. That cons that's construed of so many things. It's uh, marketing, sales, team building, systematizing. Uh, it's multifaceted. And when you're able to master even just one of those three areas, then you are on your way to improving your level of success. And I like to say that mindset is really the cornerstone, the foundation for everything in your life. Really, where you are today, right now, in your life, in your business, is a direct result of what's going on right up here. And so you um, are in for a great ride because our special guest expert, Sharifa, is going to rock your world with her amazing knowledge and experience and really pay attention really close because um yeah you're in for a great great show i can't wait i'm excited i have goosebumps i do this every time and it's real i if i pulled up my jacket sleeve you would see the goosebumps of excitement because i love to that you know i love what i get to do a lot of people say i love what i have to do it's a get to do baby so mind body business show one of the most uh, amazing things about entrepreneurs I found out that are successful follow those three patterns they have mastered or come close to mastery in all three of those areas. I call those the three pillars to success. I've been uh, studying and watching and following successful people for years now, and that kept coming up. They have a powerful, uh, uh, un immovable mindset. They all take care of themselves, and they are very good at marketing, sales, team building, scaling, bringing in help to help them do all those. Uh, and that's why this show exists, just for you, so you can model. That's a fancy word for copy. We give you our express permission to model, copy anything and everything you hear on this show, tonight and every show. That's what it's about. It's about sharing, literally, the wealth. Is that cool? Cool. And you see a lot of books behind me. One of the other items I noticed with successful people is they are voracious readers. And so I like to segue into a little segment that is appropriately named Bookmarks for this upcoming section. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. Yes, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. And by the way, real quick, uh, for all of you watching, uh, even if you're listening on the podcast, the key to this show is to stay here with us on the show. Because when I bring Sharifa on, and I promise it's very soon from now, you are not going to want to miss a single golden nugget or tidbit of information that she has to offer. I kid you not. So what I implore you to do or advise you to do is instead is take out a notebook, Get a pen and take notes. So we will be giving resources during the show. It happens every show. One of those is reachyourpeaklibrary.com. Just write it down and stay with us here on the show. Keep watching, keep listening, and get the most out of this for your benefit. Sound good? Let's do it. Reach Your Peak Library. Um, real briefly, I created this website really totally and solely for you. You, the ones that are watching and listening right now. It is a compilation of books that I have personally read that had an impact, positive impact on my life, either through business uh, or through personal means, and mostly through, through business because that's what this show is all about. And so as you scroll through here, there's about 40 in here, and I'm way behind on filling this in because I've since listened to many, and I listen to books through Audible. It's an amazing uh, way to do it. 
And so these books are here for you. If you're already an avid reader, go ahead and thumb through the list, see if there's a book you haven't read. Uh, and the odds are you'll get benefit from it too because at least one other entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur has vetted it for you in advance. Not every book I've ever read is in this list. It didn't make the grade. Here you see The E-Myth by Michael Gerber, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, that's a go-to for everyone in business. The Four Hour Work Week, The War of Art, many uh, recognizable titles for most of you. The Four Agreements, a very short read, awesome read. So just pick one, the one that first jumps off the page. No need to even scroll through the whole thing. If it jumps out at you, grab it, read it, and then go to the next. Uh, it's all about getting her done, efficiency, and talking about getting her done and being efficient, it's time because I want to get on the show right now, our special guest expert, because truly this show is about her, not about me. So let's get to it right now, shall we? Let's shall. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Sharifa Hardy. Everybody, let's give her a big round of applause. It's welcome, 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 Sharifa. How are you doing this evening? I am wonderful, Brian. Thank you. I've never had such an introduction. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Fantastic. And yes, every one of those words on the previous screen describe you. They are to a T. Let's give uh, Sharifa a quick introduction and let's jump into this thing because I know she has so much to give with all of her years of experience and her wisdom. Um, mm -hmm. So a quick intro, Sharifa Hardy is CEO of In The News PR, Public Relations, and host of Ask Sharifa videocast and podcast. I like this. She is the author of Signs You Might Be An Entrepreneur. That is a catchy title. Uh, she's also a business consultant and influencer, and there's her book as she holds it up. Look at that. I love it. Yeah, keep that handy if you would. Um, perfect. Oh, before we jump in and really get into the true essence, uh, Sharifa, if you don't mind, I'm going to do a quick reminder to our audience. Um, what I'd like to do is remind all of you watching live right now is stick on, stay on with us to the very end. Why? Because you will have the opportunity to win a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort in Mexico. And I promise you, it is not one of those things where they rope you in and you go into a timeshare meeting for half of your visit. It's not that kind of thing. In fact, this is sponsored by powertexting.com. Uh, the owner of that, Jason Nast, uh, is sponsoring that trip, and he himself has gone on that very trip to test it for all of us to make sure that it was not a timeshare. He said it was the most amazing trip. Uh, he, he was almost in disbelief how wonderful it was and that there were no hidden agendas going on. So stay on and I'll show you how you can enter to win that. So just stick with us to the end. And now to get to the essence of this young lady, Sharifa Hardy. Oh, I can't wait. Sharifa, you know, we talked a little bit right before the show off off the air and i got to get to know a little bit about you uh and for those watching and listening we didn't know each other prior to this uh mm -hmm. that's the beautiful thing about this entrepreneurs seem to speak the same language it's like a different language to many outsiders but uh, it's like a instant friendship with everyone that i ever get on this show whether i knew them ahead of time or not and uh what i wanted to do is dig a little deeper sharifa because one thing that I had always been curious about, you know, we can all go read and research about successful people all we want. And it's great. And we get to see what their accomplishments were and what they've achieved and what experiences they've had, what successes. But what I want to do is like kind of get under the skin a little bit and find out what is going on up here for you that makes you so successful. Like when you get up in the morning, if you're anything like me, uh, mm -hmm. you're groggy, you know, you're kind of coming to and then you swivel out of your bed, your feet at the floor, and then you know, life starts coming back to you and you start getting that awareness. And then, and then you start realizing the day is ahead of you. Awesome, now I get to go do more. And the motivation and drive kicks in. And I was curious for you, Sharifa, specifically, what are those things that go through your head that really get you going, excited to hit the day and go serve more people? Excellent question, Brian. Thank you for, for that one. My day starts off really weird. And I always tell people, once I touch my cell phone, there's no way I'm going to do anything but work. Because once I, I 
tune in to the world, whether it's social media, through emails, whatever it is, then my day just gets started. But what makes me so excited is that I'm able to help people. I'm able to assist entrepreneurs, business owners to start their day. So I get up early in the morning. I'm usually up about five or six o'clock in the morning. And I look for new opportunities. Like for instance, um, one of the th most recent things that I've done is I just added to my website a section where I went to different CEOs, directors, influencers, experts in their field. And I asked them, I said, you know what? What is the one tip you would give anyone on how to be successful in business? So about 30 to 40 people each gave me one tip. And so I added that information to the website. So every day I'm always looking for more and more ways, more and more avenues to help other people. Wow. I, I, I so love that because you and I obviously have so much in common in that regard, constantly tweaking, improving, modifying to get better results at a, in a, at a faster rate, but just better results, even though the results are already incredible. You know, we always we're always looking and yearning because that's the, isn't that an entrepreneurial thing, like Sharifa, that we're never like satisfied. It's uh, we we reach a certain goal and it's like okay, now let's raise the goal higher and let's hit it again. Absolutely, I mean it's actually you know you, you mentioned leaving the book out, but it's actually one of the things I talk about in signs you might be an entrepreneur, and the reason I wrote this book is because it's one of the most often mistaken things that I think people do. People believe that just because they don't want to work, they're an entrepreneur. Just because they hate their job, they hate their boss, that they're an entrepreneur. That doesn't necessarily make you an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a problem solver. That's what they are. We're always looking for, for ways to make life better, ways to, to make improvement, ways to, to help the world, not just someone who wants to do absolutely nothing all day. Those are two different mindsets. So that's what I work with people and business owners to understand that just because you don't want to work a nine to five doesn't automatically make you an entrepreneur. Now you can be, but let's look at some of the ways to make you successful. That is, those are words of wisdom right there. And that is so true. A, a lot of people think like you just said, it's almost like, I don't want to work. It's, you know, I got to tell you, it's the exact opposite. You're going to work harder than you've ever worked before. The difference is you're going to love what you're doing because you've chosen yeah. what you're working in. A uh, perfect example, I just came back from a lengthy trip. I went to New Orleans, turned right around uh, within a five hour time, got back to another airport, went to Vegas, was there for a couple of days, came back home. I was flat out done, Sharifa. I was tired. I was exhausted. And I got, you know, home. I'm getting comfy on the couch. And I just said, I can't turn it off and I don't want to turn it off. I love it. And so I picked up a book and read uh, from cover to cover uh, an entire book on the topic of podcasting. And mm -hmm. it's just that drive and that, that love and that passion. And so you hit the nail on the head. Uh, there, are, there are certain things that make people, um, you know, it's almost like we have DNA. Uh, I think there are people that can be taught to be entre entrepreneurs, but by and large, it seems like it's inbred. It's part of us. It's part of a, a special drive that one must have to be an entrepreneur because it is no walk in the in the park unless unless it is for you. <laughs> no, not at all. It took a long time for me to be here. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of struggles. But it's just interesting that you mention that because my father is uh, is self employed. He has his own business. He's in, he's been in California as as his plumbing company since 1985. So that's, you know, the DNA that runs in my blood, someone who is an entrepreneur, someone who's self-employed, whereas you have my mother, on the other hand, who's been in corporate America, mm. far, far, far away from self-employment entrepreneurship as you can possibly get. So I take from both sides and I use both sides in order to help me become successful. Wow, that is so intriguing. I've never heard that before. Uh, you get you get the best of both worlds. You know, yes, the, the structure absolutely. and the disciplined approach of a corporate life versus the freedom. It's still disciplined, though, and it can be structured, should be, of an entrepreneur, but two completely different worlds. That's that's amazing um, because, mm -hmm. you know, corporate life, typically it's very heavily process driven. It's all done by, you know, step A to B to C to D. And there's very little creativity if you're an employee. You're basically given right. what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, uh, typically. And as an entrepreneur, you decide all of those things. 
Uh, so yes. that's amazing. So you get, and Sharifa has this amazing um, experience from a place to learn from her own parents. You are set up for success from day one. That is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So I talked a little bit about books and the importance of reading books uh, in the beginning. And I, I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I see you've written one. Uh, would yes. you consider yourself, uh, Sharifa, to be an avid reader? And if so, which I'm assuming yes, uh, what book are you reading now? Or let's say, what is your favorite book thus far? We don't have to go with two different books, Brian, because of course, Signs You Might Be an Entrepreneur <laughs> is one of the best, one of the top. That is one of my all time favorites. <laughs> but I still go back to some of the tried and true books as far as business and the Think and Grow Rich is one of, one of my all time favorites, you know, because it really is our mindset. If, if you want to be successful, whatever it is that you want, you have to create that mindset in order for you to be able to go out and do it. And anytime I work with entrepreneurs, I can always tell the entrepreneurs that are going to be successful or that are successful as opposed to the ones where I'm like, mm, you know, they're just kind of playing around with this business thing, this hobby. And I always ask people when I start working with them, this simple question, are you operating a business or are you operating a hustle? Now, when I say that, there's no judgment in it. If you if you want to do a little hobby and, you know, do your business every now and then and make a call every now and then and talk to people, you know, maybe on Monday and then two weeks from now, you want to mention it again. That's not a business. That's a hustle because you're not operating it on a regular routine basis. And so, again, it's not a judgment, but when I'm working with you, it tells me how much energy to put in to working with you and what direction to go into. Because entrepreneurs, they are, are very focused. They usually work, and I, and I try to get them not to, but 20 hours a day sometimes, you know, whereas an employee, they do eight hours, maybe 12 hours, maybe, you know, maybe they had a long day. But entrepreneurs usually work from sunup to sundown. And it may be fun. A lot of what I do is like, oh, my God, this is work. I got to sit here and speak to celebrities and CEOs and influencers and, and speak to Brian and, you know, be interviewed. This is my life. You have no idea how many times when I'm doing something, when I go, oh, wow, this is my life. But this is cool. This is really what I do. But I may be answering that email at 2 a.m. I may be creating that design at, at 4 a.m. I may be doing so many different things where people who are employees, I know that they are fast asleep or watching the latest show on television where I'm doing my, what for me is my job. Oh, gosh, I love it. You're, you're amazing. This is like, it's like talking to myself. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's so, it, I, I felt the passion. I could see it. I can hear it. Uh, when you're talking about, this is what I do. It's awesome. Can you read the comment, Brian? Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I get excited sometimes because when I'm speaking about entrepreneurs, it, it's exciting to me. I love it. It's passionate. And one of the people that I work with, Frances Pullen, who I love her, she's come done so many different things in the time that I've known her. She just released her latest book, but she makes a comment. She says, I have finally started a business and given up the hustle. Thank you. You do influence me. So these are some of the people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Francis. Thank you for being the wonderful angel that you are. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yes, we love to have participation, people coming <laughs> on. Yes, and by that, please do comment. If you're watching on any of the platforms that allow commenting like Facebook, YouTube Live, or Periscope, uh, there are others. If you're watching, go ahead and, and put a comment in and ask a question, say hi, give a high five to Sharifa, whatever you want. But uh, this is an interactive show, so go ahead, get crazy and have fun with it, with us. But I loved a lot of what you were saying there, Sharifa, uh, you know, especially the part of asking them straight mm -hmm. up, are you looking at a hustle or a business? And mm -hmm. I love that because what you're doing is helping yourself. If they mm -hmm. answer and it's you determine, well, it's more of a hustle than a business, then it's, I'm guessing at that point, you're probably going to say, well, I'm, I'm actually here for businesses. I'm going to move on for those mm -hmm. who are truly dedicated. I don't want entrepreneurs. I want entrepreneurs to work with who are all in or not in at all. Is, is that a fair statement? It is actually a fair statement, Brian. I love it. I just want to add to that a little bit. I don't typically just move on. I just kind of categorize, you know, it's like noted, 
You know, I'll say noted. I know I've noted that this person is operating a hustle. This person is more focused on the business. And sometimes it may not just be a business or a hustle. One of the things that I learned early on when working with people is this expression that I actually learned in about 1997 when I was teaching sales and customer service for cheap tickets. They taught us this expression T-A-L, which means they all lie. That's what it means. And it means that customers, potential clients, they'll always tell you, oh, I would love to work with you, but I don't have any money. Oh, I would love to buy that you know, at that time, airline ticket, but I don't have my credit card. And and we go, they all lie because why would they call in to make travel reservations without a credit card? They have their credit card. You just have not motivated them to take any action with the credit card. So when I work with people, I still keep that same T-A-L in mind because people will come to me and they will tell me, and I used to believe them, Brian, let me tell you, I believe them with everything in my soul because they will say, Sharifa, I hate my job. I have a three hour commute. My coworker kicks me every day. Somebody's always stealing my lunch. I don't earn enough to even pay my rent. You have to help me. You have to help me make my business successful. And I'll be like, yeah, let's do it. Because at the end of the day, a lot of what I do in a, aside from just assisting with their brand is I'm their number one cheerleader. I'm there saying, you know what? You can be successful. You can do it. Whatever you set your mind to, you can make this business grow. You can make this business profitable. And I'm putting this time and energy into helping them build their business only to realize a year later, two years later, five years later, they're still at the same job that they hate. They still are, you know, same coworker that they can't stand is right next to them. They're receiving the same pay they complained about five years ago. So what I do is I just understand that people may say that they want to make a change. People may say that they want to make a difference, but it's not always what they are willing to do at that time. So that just kind of allows me to determine in this life altering change for them or the growth of their business, how much time and energy should I allocate to them? Exactly. And that, that's a great benefit for all of you watching uh, for your own business is to, you know, be discerning and to know who you're about to work with or not. Uh, it's OK to turn down clients because oftentimes there are certain clients that can end up costing you more than they are paying you. And it may not be in money, but it could be in aggravation, in time, in, in just continually ca playing catch up because you might have somebody with a limiting belief mindset uh, that's just not going to cut the mustard. And so what Sharifa is saying is, is gold because you want to know and be sure who you're working with before you work with them. And I totally agree with that. It's like, this is, please take notes. Everyone watching and listening, this is absolute gold. I love it. Thank you, Brian. May I, may I read a comment? You may. Okay. So, hey, Karen, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. So Karen's question is, she says, Sharifa, can you talk more about Francis's comment? How did you give up the hustle and dive into entrepreneurship 100%? Mm. Great question. One of, thank you for that question, Karen. One of the questions that I'm asked most often, but it's a twofold question. When I ask people, are you operating a business or a hustle, that's a mindset. Even if you are self-employed, working at your own business, you know, full time, I tend to look at it as a hustle. Say you don't have a full time job, but, you know, 10 hours of your 24 hours, you're actually watching television. You know, you're making sure you watch Maury Povich. You're checking out and seeing what Steve Harvey is doing. You're not actually operating your business. But every now and then you may decide, oh, let me go make a sale. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. To me, that's a hustle. It's, it's a hobby. It's something that you're doing on the side. It's not something that you're saying, let me dedicate a minimum of 40 hours a week to this business. To me, that's a business as opposed to a hustle. Now, to answer your second question, when did I go from being um, having a hustle and 100 percent entrepreneurship? For me, it happened gradually over time because I was laid off over eight times. Uh, any everything that happened to me was not a choice that I made is one of the things that that I always talk about is that when I when I wrote this is actually my second book when I wrote my first book and here's your box I was going to call it God kept closing the door but the reason I didn't call it God kept closing the door is I didn't want people to believe that it was a religious book per se 
but that's what happened. I wanted to be an employee. I wanted to stay at the jobs. And God told me, I heard him say, Sharifa, I want you to help people. And I said, mm -mm. I, I shook my head and I said, mm -mm, no, <laughs> I, I, I want to be an employee because I love the stability, something that being an entrepreneurship will never give you. I love direct deposit. I always tell people, nothing says I love you like direct deposit. Okay. If you... <laughs> direct deposit is, I'm telling you, is the, you know, but being an entrepreneur, you may have set, you know, invoices that are auto billed on the same day, but there's still that anticipation of, is this client going to cancel? Is it, you know, so I loved being an employee and what would happen is almost six months to the day I was hired at these jobs, I would get laid off. And every time I would get laid off, God would say to me, Sharifa, I want you to help people. And I would say, no, let me go and get my resume. I grab my stuff, do my little resume, send my resume out, give me a new job. Six months to the day I was laid off. And so I learned through that experience, never put all of your eggs in one basket. So it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I advise you, if you are unable to be an entrepreneur full time, wonderful, good. Have a day job, day job. I advise you to stay at your day job two years, five years, however long it takes you to have that cushion in your bank before you step out there and become an entrepreneur. Because where most entrepreneurs go wrong, where most business owners go wrong. We talk, I talked a little bit earlier about some of the top tips for success. I'll tell you one of the biggest mistakes new business owners make. They do not have enough money in the bank to operate their business successfully for a certain amount of time. If you would speak to anyone, the Harvard Law School of Thumb says you should have enough money in the bank for five years without making one profit before you start your, what, you know, any amount of profit before you start your business. If you go to the SBA, which is the Small Business Administration, they'll tell you you should have enough money in the bank for two years without whether or not you make a profit in order to operate your business. But what I find is most entrepreneurs do what I call a Hail Mary pass. Brian, are you a sports guy? You know what a Hail Mary pass is. Oh, yeah. That's when you're like, oh, it's going to take a miracle. But all I got to do, I was speaking to one of my friends who has a PR firm the other day, and, and we were discussing this. Like People tend to say, you know what? Okay, I want to do PR. I want to do business. And I have enough money that if this works, I can be in business. Your energy is already in that kind of Vegas gambling kind of, you know, roulette, everything on the wheel kind of mindset. You should be able to operate your business successfully, whether or not you make one dime for a certain amount of time, which gives you a lot, uh, gives you time to breathe and gives you time to build your business as opposed to hoping for a Hail Mary pass. Long winded answer, but I hope that answered your question, Kim. Yeah, there were many facets to it, and I love that. Um, you know, that's another good reason to, if you have a job, to keep it while you're working on your entrepreneurial activities because you can then use that to fund your business in a way, and you'll know exactly how much is coming in, what you can afford to do, and what you can take on, what tools, resources, coaching you can hire, uh, things of that nature. Oh, my gosh, there were so many things that you said that were awesome. Uh, and one, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, uh, Sharifa, for those that – have a job and I thank you by the way for the advice of stay at your job and work at it while you're building your business how many times I'm sure you've heard this in the past where others on stage would say if you don't just quit your job today then you're never gonna be an entrepreneur and I think my god that's so in irresponsible that's the word I mean there are people out there in various conditions you know there's there's single moms there's people with kids going to college you can't just up and go and I have a friend I can think of the person who did just that, and he is in terrible hurt right now. Terrible mm -hmm. situation. It's a horrible, so thank you for actually being a proponent of stick with what you got, keep the income coming, and use it um, to basically fund your business that way. Uh, but for those that are looking to become an entrepreneur that don't want to give it two to five to ten years to get out of that situation because they're doing it usually for that reason, they want to get out. Um, what would you say, if you could encapsulate it, and I know there's way more than this, but if you could encapsulate into the top three skills they would need to become a successful entrepreneur and finally you know, burst that bubble of corporate and be, be free and liberated and a full-time entrepreneur? 
I, I would say, first of all, they have to have tenacity. Okay, that stick to itiveness. You have being an entrepreneur is not easy. I think it's probably one of the most difficult things that I've done. I've been divorced twice and I had two kids. Being an entrepreneur is very difficult. So you have to have tenacity. You have to be able to stick to it. Then while you're sticking to it, you have to have adaptability. You have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to change because I've written business plans. We raised millions with one of the business plans that, that we wrote together. And guess what? Where we actually raised the millions from had absolutely nothing to do with the business plan at all. It was the same company, but the, our business model changed, our revenue models changed. There was so much change that happened after we raised, after we wrote the business plan just through life, just through what happens in life. So once again, you are tenacious, make sure you're willing to be adaptable and change. And then I always say you have to be a lifelong learner. You have to be able to learn new ways, new things. Again, that comes back to adaptability, change. One of my first jobs out of high school, which I absolutely love, this was to a certain extent, some ways my dream job. I was working for Trans World Airlines. And, you know, again, I'm a kid, 18 years old, out of high school. I can fly for free anywhere in America that I wanted to go. And I'm flying first class. Now I'm kind of insulted that now you not only want me to pay for the airfare, you want me to sit in the back. <laughs> no, I'm kind of giving up that sit in the back kind of thing, you know. So this was freedom for me. But at 18 years old, one of the things that I saw is I, I would say, why are you faxing the passengers, their reservations, and they would say, this is the way we've done it. This is the way we'll always do it. And I'm like, hmm, you might want to try an email. And they went out of business. Now, I'm not saying that it was a direct result of them, you know, not fasting is the reason why they went out of business. There are a lot of different reasons why Transworld Airlines went out of business. But the key is you have to be able to change, to adapt, look for new ways, new processes, learn new things. Sometimes an entrepreneur is passionate about one thing. Say you're passionate about ice cream. We all love ice cream. We love to eat ice cream. We love our favorite flavor. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we know how to operate a successful business, any kind of business. Just because we like something doesn't know we know how, mean we know how to operate that business. But it doesn't mean that you can't learn. So learn how to operate a business. Learn every aspect of your business. Learn accounting. Learn marketing. Learn, you know, writing, content writing. Learn every aspect and not just, oh, I love ice cream. I want to be free. I don't want to work for anyone. You will never, and I, and I don't like to use terms like never, but that's never going to make you successful. You have to be a successful business owner beyond just the passion of what you do. Excellent. I love it. Stick to it. Another word for tenacity uh, and adaptability and change, being able to change. Uh, flexibility is another word that comes to mind as well. Uh, lifelong learner. Oh, my gosh, you hit on, on all my faves. And uh, on the lifelong learner and um, being flexible part of it, uh, I, had, I have a, a mentor who would go to a seminar by a you know, prominent person and learn it. And then turn around and the next weekend, the following weekend, he would have put together an entire PowerPoint presentation and he would teach it. I mean, talk about turning something around. And that's the thing. It's great to learn. Uh, it's better to do. And then it's even better to teach. And that's mm -hmm. the thing with uh, learning. I know you do all of these. It's so obvious, Sharifa. Uh, but I love the, the undertowing uh, meaning there, which was be willing to learn, continue to learn. I'm like, that's one of the greatest things about entrepreneurship to me personally is you're always learning because we're always growing. We're looking for that next step, that next level, that next success, that next goal. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about it because if Sharifa, I mean, I'm just curious, what if you hit, what if there was something uh, such as a plateau, the very top, you could never go farther than this plateau. And then one day you're building, 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 you reach it and now you can go no higher. How would that feel to you? What would that make your life look and feel like? I'm just curious. 
See, that was an excellent question, but that was one of those those catch questions. Like I had a little catch there in the question because see, an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur would never believe that. We would never, ever, ever in our mind, in our psyche, accept that to be true. Because even if there was a plateau and this plateau was here and this is the highest that I could go, guess what? I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm digging, you know, I'm moving because an entrepreneur is never satisfied. Successful people, you watch them, they're never satisfied. I mean, you look at some of your most successful people, how many businesses do they have? What are they doing now? You always say, like you'll hear their friends say, what are you doing now? They're always moving, changing and growing. So maybe they can't go up, but they'll find a different direction to go. I I knew that would be, I knew you would answer it similarly to that because that's, that's, you can't stop. It's, it's in our blood. It's, it's amazing. Um, And here it's, I, I liken it to the concept of this word called retirement. Uh, I don't Mm -hmm. believe in it. I don't think it exists. And all I look at that, I would rephrase that and call it career transitioning because Mm -hmm. it's just going to, if you're going to stop working towards something, you're just going to transition to something else and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But retiring is jump in the hammock, play golf every day. If that's your thing, go do a hobby every day and just wait to die. That's my definition of retirement. And I don't like it. I agree. And so, um, it's you know what this isn't this just an amazing way to live life Sharifa it's exciting it, it it's motivating it's fun it's it's hard there are disappointments it, it's a roller coaster ride but that's life and it's it's a great way to experience life to me no I agree but the the beauty of it is is that you get to experience life you know yeah. I have a very tight schedule these days but for a long time I fought. I didn't want to have a tight schedule. I didn't like to book things on my calendar. I was very kind of, you know, lackadaisical, like, oh, call me. Oh, I might be available. I I didn't want to have to be anywhere at a specific set time. Brian knows because he was like, be here 30 minutes prior to the show. I'm like, 30 minutes? Like, can't we just slide in about five minutes and do the show? You know, I kind of live my life in that kind of manner. So, I mean, I, I definitely agree. But, you know, even in, in everything that I do that's not on my calendar, I always tell people it may be a day where I have absolutely nothing on my calendar. But on that same day where nothing is on my calendar, I've done a million things because I wake up, I grab that cell phone, I check my email, I listen to my messages, I review my texts, I see what's going on in social media, and some I'll start some conversation which leads to some meeting which leads to some conference, and I look up and I'm like, I had nothing to do today, but I've done a million things. <laughs> exactly, and I love the whole thing about, I don't wanna schedule things. I, you know, I think that comes from the, the time of being in the corporate world because one of the things we want to break free of is mm-hmm. being told what to do when to do it Mm -hmm. and being on a schedule. It's like, you have to report to work at 8 a.m. You have to be there. If you're late, you're gonna get, you know, virtually slapped and Mm -hmm. things will not, not good things will happen. So you're adhering to a schedule. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I've noticed, one of the patterns of successful entrepreneurs is they are more scheduled than most corporate people are. They have more discipline and more, I mean, my calendar is my lifeblood now. It used to be, I was in corporate as well, Sharifa, and I get it, I get what you're saying, uh, because you feel confined and someone else is calling the shots. And even though you're now an entrepreneur and you're calling your own shots, the last thing you want is to paint yourself in a corner and say, I have to do this at this exact time on this exact day, because it feels kind of constricting. And you want to be free. That was the whole purpose is to break free. But now you come full circle and realize you must do it if you want to be successful. And then you just you get over it and you envelop it, embrace it. And you say, that's what going to if that's what it's going to take. I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I have a really cool question for you, um, Sharifa. And this is one, you know, how, how many have you been to a lot of seminars in the past networking events? Yes. Yeah. And so on many of those, they will go up on the stage and show you the XYZ method to marketing and that it's the way to go. It's the only way it's going to make you millions. And um, there's so, marketing is so multifaceted. There are so many ways to market. That's one of the reasons I love the whole topic. But the thing is, I never actually got to grab onto it, one that truly worked. I mean, grab onto it, implement it and go, you know, it didn't work for me. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I'm always curious of truly successful people as yourself, 
if you could name just one, because um, I know there's many, uh, that really mm -hmm. sticks out to you, one way that you have marketed your business in the past, or maybe you're doing it currently, that has mm -hmm. been your most successful form of marketing to date. Okay. Now, Brian, one of the things that you mentioned is that there wasn't one that really just stood out to you, that stuck with you, that you're like, I'm going to do this. But to a certain extent, I'm going to beg to differ because I know there is one that you do, that you will continue to do, and that you will always do. And it's to me, is the best form of marketing. So I do some networking with networking groups that I'm a part of, that I've been a part of for some time with my friends that I know, but I particularly stay away from seminars. Because like yourself, I've noticed that there's nothing new under the sun. So you can repackage it. You can shout a little higher. You can yell a little. You know, you could promise 20,000 funnel, you know, through the funnel, whereas this person says they can get 10,000 through the click channel. And so I stay away from that because, like I said, the one form of advertising marketing that works, will always work, has always worked, is word of mouth advertising. That's it. The majority of my business comes from referrals. The majority of my higher paying clients come through referrals. The people who come to me through word of mouth because they talked to Brian, they saw me on Brian's show and they said, you know what? I really like that lady. I think she knows what she's talking to, talking about. I would really love to speak with her. We have a consultation and they become a client or people who I didn't try to advertise to. I do a lot of posting on social media. I do not boost or pay for my posts. I just post and I just share. And I, because I'm very engaged on my social media, those people who have a relationship with me turn into clients. I have people who ask me all the time, they say, Sharifa, whenever you make a post, you get comments, people respond to you, people comment back to you. How do you build engagement? And I always tell them the number one way to build engagement is to be engaged. I will never, you will never, and people watching who know me know this to be true, I will never allow a comment to go unanswered. So if you want a little sound bite, there it is. Never allow a comment to go unanswered. That's advertising. That's marketing. So I'm at least right back and say thank you for my most tired this day when I'm about to pass out and you know the last thing that I do if I'm responding I'm just going to say thank you but I'm not going to allow somebody to come to my page or to come to my profile and say Sharifa I really like that post I really like that interview you did a great job or I love that go that guest or I saw you with Brian Kelly and Brian Kelly is amazing and I don't say anything no so I build the conversations, I build the engagement, because guess what? Somebody's going to say, hey, you know that lady? I want to work with her. And then they're going to reach out to me as opposed to me paying for Google AdWords, me paying for Facebook advertising. Again, I've been doing this for 25 years. I built my first website in 1994. There's very little as far as online advertising and marketing that people can tell me, oh, this is the magic pill. Just do this, push this, and you're going to get visitors. Nope, doesn't work that way. So true. I'm laughing like crazy because uh, I've heard that so many times, the magic pill. This is the greatest automation software on the planet. And uh, being a tech geek, a lot of those would <laughs> snare me. I would just be all in. Oh, this is it. Finally, I can take it easy for a little bit, press a button and sit back and wait for the sales to try, come flying in. And, you know, we've all been through this to some degree. Uh, and that's how we learn what works and what doesn't. And here's the thing uh, that we are here for you about. And that's what Sharifa just told you is you don't need to go through this trial and error period that both of us have gone through in our past uh, years. All you have to do is listen to success, i.e. Sharifa, and model success. So start, re start engaged, I love that. Build engagement by being engaged. That is a, a, that, that's a book title if I'd ever heard one, that is amazing. And, uh, <laughs> And that's yours. Not I won't take it. It's all yours. Oh, I know, I didn't write it because I just asked for you know a little credit in there somewhere. Maybe I'll write the forward for you. You know, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it, and I, that's so true. I love how um, you're just you're brutally honest about the fact that you know I don't know if everyone's recognizing this that's watching and listening right now, but uh, the brutal truth of being a successful entrepreneur is a four letter word, and it's work, uh, and mm -hmm. that's what Sharifa does. The thing is though. It's really more to us. Yes, there's work involved. It can, there are bad days, but to us, it's more like play. It's another four letter mm -hmm. word. It's because we enjoy what we do. We're looking at the outcome, not at what's happening that day, but what are the results we are going to get as a result of our efforts? 
And that's, you know, kind of leading into that burning question of what is your why, which is a much <laughs> bigger question, uh, but that keeps you going. And, and Sharifa has all of this, all of this. I've interviewed a lot of successful entrepreneurs. Uh, Sharifa is way up there in having all of the three um, necessary components or patterns that I've noticed, the mind, body, and business. I mean, her mindset is rock solid. You can see the confidence in her. That doesn't come in a day. It comes from trial and error, getting kicked down, getting raised back up, getting kicked back down, getting raised back up, um, failing over and over and over. The faster you can fail, the better, because the more failures you go through, the more you'll learn, and the faster you will find those key ingredients that actually lead to success. And we could mm -hmm. go on all night about this because we just could. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's phenomenal. Uh, I, the value you are bringing to this show right now, Sharifa, is just off the charts, and I appreciate that so much. Um, Thank you. And I'm, I have one. Uh, I, you have the past corporate life, and I love that. We have that in common. And having that and experienced that and now and having been an entrepreneur, um, I was curious if, if, if you could encapsulate in one word, how would you characterize your life as an entrepreneur? How would I characterize my life? Yeah. As much fun. My life is fun. Fun. Oh, yes. My life is fun. Fun is the, the ingredient, the key ingredient to manifestation. So that's our second book, the key ingredient to manifestation. And it's fun. People want to be around people who are fun. They want to do business with people who are fun. You know, and when people first become my friend on social media, sometimes they're like, Sharif, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you posted that. And it's not a, a negative. It's not a, you know, a, a bad thing. It's just that I talk about whatever it is that I feel like talking about. And that's what I'm known for. Just really the brutal, honest truth. And so that's what I always tell people about being an entrepreneur. Have fun. Be whoever you are. The people who like you will love you. The people who don't care for you. They don't want to do business with you anyway. They don't, you don't want to do business with them. Let's get back to that. And one of the things that we talked about earlier that you mentioned is like fees. Whenever I'm working with clients, I never get upset. I never get aggravated. I never get irritated. I love all of my clients. However, if a client were to possibly irritate me, it might be because they, they want different changes or they did this and they did that. But guess what? I've already priced their package at a certain rate. So I expect all of these questions. I expect all these different things, but because of the price of the package, it works for me. So I'm always having fun. If I can't have fun doing what I do, if I can't have fun working with the client, I guarantee you for any amount of money, that person will no longer be a client. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to enjoy life, especially if you want to be successful. One of my favorite, I love marketing stories. And I'm sure you heard this one, but the, the flying fish at um, Pike's Fish Market in Seattle is, is one of my favorite. If not, uh, maybe some people in your audience haven't heard it, yeah. but the yeah. owner of Pike's Fish Market in Seattle, Washington, was going out of business. He was losing all of his money and he was losing the fish market. And he said, you know what, guys, he went out, he told the whole team, we're losing the, the company. We're no longer going to be in business. Let's just have some fun. Let, you know, it's the end have some fun. And so what they did is they started taking the fish and tossing the fish back and forth to each other. Just, hey, having fun. And you know what? Because they were having fun, the people who were walking by saw all these boring fish places and they said, what are they doing over there? It looks fun. And so they went over there. The people purchased the fish and the owner was able to save the company just because they had a little fun. And you know what they do now? You know what he does now? He travels the world teaching other business owners how to be successful, how to use the same key ingredient to, to create more revenue or to further monetize their business. But the key ingredient is have fun. So if whatever you're doing right now, whatever it is, I don't care if it's a job, I don't care if it's an entrepreneur, if whatever you're doing right now is not fun for you, you need to be doing something else. I stand by that. Now, I'm not one of those people, like I said earlier, that says, quit your day job today. No, but find what you want to do. Find your purpose and go start learning how to do that and move into doing that because life is supposed to be fun. Amazing. I love it. And so you have 
Sharifa's and my permission right now to go out and have fun. Yes, yes. Because too many people, you know, take life too seriously. And I love um, how you talked about your posts. And this is a great lesson uh, that it takes some people all too long to learn. And it's literally just be authentic, be yourself. And also, it's okay to be a little bit transparent. I mean, be a human being. It's like, if you have a bad day, it's okay to post about it. Doesn't make you a negative person. Um, you mm-hmm. can say, I, you know, I really had a down day, but guess what? At the end of the day, I picked myself up, and this is how I overcame it. You can make it into a lesson, uh, but just mm-hmm. be yourself. Don't, you know, the thing I, I despise when I see them, and you can tell them. They're, I mean, Sharif, I know you know what I'm talking about when I say there's a picture of somebody in front of a Lamborghini, and you know it's not theirs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and right. if they post about it and say, this is my dream car, okay, that's authentic. But if they're mm-hmm. doing it, to kind of look more successful than they are. That's not being authentic. And people will, you know, it's like a dog sensing fear. (laughs) People will sense that you're not being authentic and they will go the other way. And what Sharifa says is, look, if people don't align with you, good. Those are people that you would normally waste time with if they did end up being your clients when you were inauthentic because Mm -hmm. you would be in a value misalignment at that moment when you do become, uh, you know, when they do become a client. So it's actually serving you to be authentic and lose followers more than being unauthentic and gaining followers, if that makes sense. So I love this great advice, uh, Sharifa. Perfect advice. Man, you're you're just off the charts. I'm I'm having so much fun. I think I'm having the most fun. That's what I get to do as a host. I get to have, I'm having fun. Somebody told me I can have fun. I'm doing it. I can tell you're over there kicking your feet in your chair like a two-year-old yeah. wiggling back and forth. It looks great. It looks like you're having fun over well, there. How'd you see that? That's pretty good. I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I, I love and see there's some laughter. Um, you know, a lot of topics sounded serious, but this is your life. And mm-hmm. we want you to get this information. Sharifa wants you to really understand. I mean, you can tell by listening to her now for almost an hour. This is phenomenal information. You can't get this in a seminar. You won't get this in a seminar. Let me rephrase that. You're not going to get this. You're going to get a sales pitch, which I love. I love watching, listening to sales pitches because I learn from them. If they work, mm-hmm. people run to the back of the room. I said, that was a good one. Take note of that one. Mm-hmm. But you won't get the straight, this is how you become successful, because how much are we charging for people to watch this show right now, Sharif? I'm just guessing. Well, I, I, don't, I didn't know of a charge for yeah, this. No. Maybe you used to be in there, but I didn't know of a charge. Yeah, there's no ulterior motive, in other words. We're not charging a dime. This is free information. Don't take it as such. I mean, act as though this is worth $20,000 or more, because if you just take three of the things Sharifa has said on this show that you haven't been doing and you put them in practice, you will see a huge difference in your business life and perhaps even your personal life because business is really a relationship when it comes down to it. Sharifa has already told you, word of mouth is the number one marketing mechanism in her business. Well, to do that, she has to establish relationships, doesn't she? And she told you exactly how to do that and that is by engaging with her people on social media, those that she meets, It's just, this is gold, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please, please write, take down notes. If you need to play this show over again, whether it's video, whether it's on podcast uh, and take notes again, because just like reading a book, have you ever read one more than once, Sharifa, one book? Absolutely. And then that second time you read it, was it, did it come out exactly the same as the first and all the same exact information? No. You You, you find some jewels. And, And it's because once you've read the first time, now you've grown. And then suddenly, you know, you've already got that information that pulled out and now you're ready for the more advanced stuff. And each time you go through a a certain book, more and more stuff comes out and it's amazing. So I I implore you, especially with this show, because uh, this is one of the highest value uh, shows I've ever interviewed. I'm not kidding you, Sharifa, and I'm so grateful to you. I'm not kidding. I know. I appreciate that. I'm so grateful and I honor. But that's what I do. I'm here to help business owners. I mean, simple, plain, easy. You mentioned that there was no fee for the show. I don't charge for a consultation. So, I mean, if people just need somebody to toss an idea out on, they have questions, whatever it is, I'm here to help. They can go to my website, you know, ask me. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation. I'm sure I can help you personally and specifically in some form of faith fashion. And the funny thing is most of the people who contact me, they don't even know specifically what they need help with. 
They don't know what the problem is, but ask Sharifa and we'll work it out. I'll use my expertise, my guidance, you know, to be able to help you. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because in a moment we will uh, give folks a means to connect with Sharifa. All of you can connect with her and uh, she can, uh, we will show you exactly how you can get that free consultation. It's an amazing gift that she's offering. Uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment. And yes, we are coming down to the one hour mark already. Uh, um, and there's one final question. I really, it, it's a burning question, Sharifa. I asked this of all my past guest experts and it's an amazing question not because of the question itself, but because of the responses. And um, if it takes time to think about the answer, no problem. If you get it instantly, no problem. I've seen it from you know, the low end to the high end. There is no, there's no right or wrong way. Um, and, but before we do that, I do want to though, I promised that uh, I would show our live listeners how they can win a five night stay to five star luxury resort in mexico so here it comes watch your screens everyone all you need to do is take out your cell phone punch in the phone number of 661-535-1624 and then type the word peak in the message and hit send that's it p-e-a-k so again that's 661-535-1624 and then type the word peak, P-E-A-K, in the message field and tap on send, and we will receive that. This is, again, all sponsored by our good friends at powertexting.com. And to take it a step further, we are utilizing their technology for this very contest and many other things in our business. Uh, so you will get to experience that as well. So I love, 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 love this. And so you have our permission to do that right now. Go ahead. Keep watching. Keep listening. Uh, if you're watching and listening on your phone, that may be a struggle. I get it. But uh, come on back because the big question is about to be announced. So, Sharifa, the cool thing, I just uh, in case any nerves come up, which you're a pro, I doubt you have any um, antsiness going on. But the thing I love to say is um, with this question, there is absolutely no such thing as a wrong answer. None. And in fact, it's just the opposite. The only correct answer is yours because it's unique to every person. So you can just relax, take a breath. If, if there was any tension whatsoever, I don't see any, but uh, yeah. And just, you know, again, like we always say, have fun with it, right? And just, you know, go back into your childhood like a girl and go back to your inner self and say, well, I think I know the answer to this one. And it'll come I to do. you. It'll come to you instantly. You already know. I already know the answer. Even though you haven't heard the question, you already know the answer. See, that's the season action taker. Years of business, I know the answer. Yes. Are you ready? I am ready. Sweet. Ah, Sharifa Hardy. How do you define success? Happiness. I thought it was something difficult, you know, because starting early, I thought success was a dollar amount. And what I found is that most successful people are happy with their life. They're happy just being who they are, where they are, what, whatever it is that's in their bank. They're just happy. And so to me, being successful is just being happy with your life and who you are. Uh, and beautiful. And, you know, something I didn't mention right before asking the question um, is that I find this very interesting, Sharifa. I've asked this question many, many, many times, many guests. And do you know that there are not two of you, not two of you that answered the same way? And that's still true to this day. <laughs> Another that's unique wonderful. answer. I love it. I and, think you can be happy. That's success to me. Yeah, everyone is unique in their definition of success. And it, I love that. I'm going to, I'm, I am compiling all of those into another, you know, like a small book. And we'll just call it, How Do You Define Success? It'll be awesome. Uh, because of the, just the, uh, the variety of the answers is just, I love it. It's amazing. I was, you couldn't see me because I took myself off camera. I was doing this. I love this answer. <laughs> I love all of them. Happiness. Um, yeah, happiness. And the thing you, you also mentioned right on the tail of that, I used to think it was about money. Mm -hmm. And the, the other interesting thing is there isn't a single one. There was one actually, but the way they framed it, it was slightly different, but not a single one. Their answer was not money centric for the sake of making money. Um, mm -hmm. No one mentioned money. There was one that did, uh, but he also framed it in a way that, well, the reason he thinks it's important to make money is so he can serve others. So the really underlying reason was to help yes, other people. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And money is a means to an end. It does help. I mean, without money, Sharifa couldn't do what she does. And so That's right. I hereby uh, want Sharifa to earn millions and millions of dollars because she has so much to help other people with. And I, I bless her to have this money. Bring it. Bring it. A lot of money because I know that what she will do with that money is for the betterment of others. And she can scale her business and help more. So please please sharifa and everyone around there let's 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 gather around and help her make even more money so she can serve more does that sound cool? i received it. i received that and guess what with all that money sharifa will be very happy <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and you know everyone you touch as well because yes. you'll be able to operate at an even higher level than you are now they will receive even more value which i know it's hard to imagine at this moment mm -hmm. but you will improve. We all do as humans. No, we never reach that plateau or perfection. And so and Absolutely. knowing your drive, you're just going to continue to expand and improve. And when you do that, so does the results of your the people you come in contact with. So thank you so much, uh, Sharifa. We want to um, I want to give you the opportunity now and, and please also include more specifics of what you do, the clients you're after. Um, in fact, let's do that right now. Uh, what is it exactly? What is your ideal client? Um, what do you do for specifically for your clients that help them get to the next level? And then we will go into the segment real quickly of how they can connect with you and get that free consultation. Does that sound cool? It sounds very cool, Brian. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for this complete opportunity to even sit down with you. It's definitely an honor. But if anyone wants to work with me, my ideal client is someone who is looking for more exposure because that's what I do. I help uh, local businesses gain global exposure. So whether that's through media, whether it's podcasts, radios, television, I help you get out there with your story, with your brand. So that's that's what I do. Uh, but they can contact me through my website at AskSharifa.com. I'll do a consultation because sometimes you just have a question on what else can you do to make more money, to, to expand, what more you can do on social media. So that's typically what I do. And again, on the website, it, it tells you if you click on the Let's Talk link, it takes you to my calendar and you can schedule a free consultation with me. And we'll talk about your business. It sounds like a deal to me. So I agree. Uh, that website one more time is Ask Sharifa. And that's S H A R I F A H dot com. So go to yeah. Ask Sharifa dot com. Click on that black Let's Talk button on the left hand side. Schedule your consultation. Hundred percent complimentary. I, that's amazing, Sharifa. That's that shows the serving uh, heart that she has. And she, you know what? You may find out you're a fit, you may not be, and either way is gonna be okay because you can tell Sharifa is like, it's okay. She has an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset, and that is good for you, the person that's setting up that, that uh, consultation. She'll just tell you like it is. I, I can tell already, I know uh, from her wonderful personality, that's, you know, it would be a disservice if she didn't, wouldn't it? So, fantastic. Sharifa, once again, Thank you so very much, very much for gracing our virtual stage tonight. Uh, you, you just brought it. You brought so much value. I, I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, and all of you watching, listening, that we're interacting, we, we appreciate you as well. Uh, you still have a little bit of time to enter that contest. You have to rewind to find out the information uh, and get that five-night vacation stay. But Sharifa, thank you once again. Uh, and I can't wait to serve you and help you in the future, see how we can collaborate and help each other out going forward. And that's the, way, that's the way the You're world welcome. rolls. Pardon? You are welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Very welcome. All right, that's it for now for this show, for this edition of the Mind Body Business Show. Tune in again. We're coming up very soon. Uh, go to, to the mindbodybusinessshow.com and scroll all the way to the bottom, opt in, and we will notify you of the next show that's coming up live and exactly how to get to it and watch it as well. On behalf of Sharifa Hardy, this is Brian Kelly saying good night and be blessed, everyone. So long. Thank you for watching and listening. This has been the Mind Body Business Show with Brian Kelly.